Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Hi, my name is Victor Trujillo. I feel for you guys. I live up in Juniper Hills up on the other side of the <laughs> desert. Can you put the ice there? We got winds up to 90, 100 miles per hour. It's going to, the disaster's going to happen. I mean, these disasters are common. I've reached and I talked to a lot of people that when there's always a murder, mass murders, usually they start fires. This fire was fixed. There's no game. That captain was here. He had to have a team out here. He was by himself rambling. I was shocked. Everybody said they want help. I, good luck. Every official is going to touch you. You walk out of here. I got seven, eight years. They stole all my properties. They don't play games here in the county. The county, on their book and their internet, they're not allowed to help people in the public. They're only to protect the government. So, people, if you think you're getting help, you better start finding a way to sue the county because the county ain't going to do nothing for you. In your districts, Sheila Q has helped my uncle in, what, six years? He almost got kidnapped three times. This is a disaster. Make sure you get it documented and they tell you they're going to give you and make sure they write your check. Like Barger said, they're going to build your home. Good luck. Thank you. Next speaker, please. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Nora Cohen. I'm a mother of three children. Um, we evacuated first thing Friday morning, and then I sent my husband and children off to our kind friends who could house a family of five in this incredible time. Um, and then I ran up to our ranch, I represent Big Heart Ranch, to get out all of our <laughs> animals, our animals therapy and healing for the combat veterans that you guys, you know, gave awards to for foster kids in the community. We bring people into Malibu and support all of Los Angeles. In fact, I think you gave Merging Vets and Players a grant to come to our ranch. We had to get all those animals out. Our evac teams were at two other big fires, okay? So we get that it wasn't resourced, but it's still really scary, and, and we need to resource it now. We need people to be able to come in and get to their homes. And it's obviously safety is important, but there are reasonable um, asks at those checkpoints. And we need to be able to rebuild this community because it doesn't just represent a small amount. We really do represent and support the all of Los Angeles. So we thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hey, my name is Nick Stewart. I'm an artist and resident up in Decker Canyon, Malibu. And 98% lost my house. Um, but there was a lot of issues with this thing. The evacuation was not smooth. I had to hear about this smooth evacuation on the radio a hundred times while I'm sitting in that Zuma parking lot wondering if I'm going to die from the smoke. It was not smooth. I signed up for these evacuation texts and these emergency text messages or whatever through your guys' website two years in a row. I've never gotten one. And there's been a lot of evacuations in the last two years. So that's a major issue. Bad information is another major issue. And the way the police were treating people and not informing people or misinforming people. If I had listened to the police officer on Zuma Beach that was allowing people to go down into West where it's the beach by the Sunset Restaurant, that place was a death trap. The fire started raining lava down onto these cars and stuff in that area and they were allowing people to get there to get, get away from the smoke. They were sending me towards PCH where I could see the fire coming down Canaan. I mean, if I had listened to these people, I'd be, you know, I, I don't know. It, it just, the bad information was really bad. And, and the media is responsible too. I don't need to be listening to the radio hearing about Caitlyn Jenner's house burning down. I'm wondering how I'm going to survive tonight. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Well, we're going to keep this on. I'm a resident of Malibu. Um, my family's in there five generations, and we've survived many fires, and I've never seen anything like this. The evacuation, like he was saying, was I know people that couldn't get out, and they just gave up and turned around. Um, the only way to get supplies in, like gasoline, water, the water has been out in many communities, and people were taking buckets from pools of neighbors to try and put out spot fires, and, and people were just completely panicking. Um, they needed medical aid, and the only way to get stuff in has been by boat, so we'd like to thank the lifeguards who've been working around the clock um, to help get supplies to the beach. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Next speaker, please. Um, you know, if you like what a speaker says, if you could just do this instead, otherwise. Fuck yourself. Time. Um, so that would be great. And if you don't like what they said, you can say this. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Okay. Hi, I'm Rory Kennedy. Thank you all for giving me a moment here. I'm a, a resident of Malibu, California as well. And I uh, appreciate all that everybody has done. In the
and the first responders and the fact that this fire has been a really extraordinary one. I do think that we are in the new normal and that the resources weren't available to fight it at the level that it needed to be fight, fought. And what we found on the front lines of Malibu were that a lot of the members of the community ended up fighting the fire. They part, uh, contributed to saving my own house. It's people stepping in and my concern is that when we don't have the resources in these various communities that people do step up and the greatest concern as uh, the chief said is loss of lives and when people step up and do a job that somebody else is going to do that's what it's going to lead to so I really think moving forward we need to have a system in place that's going to account for these very large every year we're having the biggest fire that we've ever seen in the history of this state and that's going to continue based on all of the information that we have and I'd just like to say one more thing which is right now in Malibu people are doing the same thing and they're there, they don't have the resources, nobody's coming in, there's no system in place, there's no distribution in place, so people are doing it themselves. And I really think FEMA's got to get in there, or the, the National Guard's got to get in there, and we need a system right now, because it's chaos. Thank you. Thank Speaker, you. please. <laughs> Hi, my name is Cassia Metter. I grew up in the hills and on the beaches in and around Malibu area. I lost my home last year due to a fire, and the fire hydrant at the end of my street was totally dead. I think that all the Las Vegas Water Department needs to reach out to these hydrants. I also think it's imperative to have water trap systems for people in their communities, so maybe if there's no hydrants available, we have access to water that we can catch. I also feel it's gravely yeah. important to inform the people and the community communities on what to do in case of fires. All my friends are down on the beach posting up. They made an outpost. They are community members, not firefighters. They have no training. I also think there absolutely needs to be a better way to let people know how to evacuate, when to evacuate. There needs to be some sort of layer of um, announcement systems throughout the community so people can know right away and people aren't going door to door. Um, I also believe that, you know, it's, it's in informing people and empowering people to save their own lives and the lives of their families and loved ones that is going to really help in things like this. Last thing is we are just, um, you know, Mother Nature is always in charge. We don't know what's coming at us, and if we're prepared and over-prepared, fires start like this. We know when storms are coming. We don't know when fires are coming, so we need to be extra prepared and have help from the federal government for times like this because we pay a lot more taxes than anybody else. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, hi, I'm Damien Chazelle. I'm a, uh, a resident of Malibu uh, as well. I just wanted to um, uh, reiterate what some of the other uh, speakers have mentioned about uh, evacuation announcements. Uh, in in, in my, my wife's particular case, we only found out about the evacuation by, ironically, people calling us who lived in, you know, uh, sort of closer to here or in West Hollywood or in Los, An uh, uh, sort of Los Angeles proper. Um, and as we got on the road and drove out, we passed several people just out walking dogs, uh, and we would kind of pull over, ask if they'd heard about the evacuation, and uh, in all cases, they hadn't heard anything. We're completely surprised to find out about it. And then, of course, once you get on the roads, it, it, I want to reiterate that point as well, that it took, uh, it would take you about six hours to get anywhere close to San Monica. So I just think that system of getting wow. a, uh, kind of a, a community-wide announcement, whether it's something similar to Amber Alerts or something that just wakes people up, I think is really crucial and will help some of that. Thanks. Thank you. Six hours, huh? My name is Kathleen Summers. I'm a 38-year member of the Malibu community. I think my neighbors have spoken so well, and I agree with all of them, from the thanks to the warning. And as you have said, this is the new normal or abnormal, and we need to be prepared now. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, wow. please. Well, as a result, we are all affected, not by the Malibu fire, all right, Armin. But by the state of California's long-awaited maintenance to continue fixing the problems of hiring and creating the clearance barrier on our properties. So stop putting the blame on the fire. Are we going to blame the homeless once again? No, let's blame our forestry people who forget to go out and clear the brush in which you charge my parent $500 a year to keep her property clean in a residential area off of Hacienda Heights. Shame on you. 
Shame on you, a disabled woman on a fixed income paying for things that of service that she cannot get while the rest of this public here has to suffer in the same consequences. Shame on you. Next speaker, please. Herman. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I am homeless by design. I've not heard one of the individuals mention the word homeless. You've lost your homes. You've lost your structures. You've lost everything. You are now homeless. Whether it's temporary or permanent, you are homeless. And wow. I've not heard it. Not one individual make a mention of that. I wonder why. Well, you are now technically homeless. So... I just want you to know that it, it doesn't feel good. It feels awful not having a place to live. Um, it's disgusting. Second, I'd like to go ahead and say, could this be directed energy weapons used by the government, CIA, FBI, NSA, or Homeland Security? Are you being targeted? I know I am, but I wonder if that could be a plausible excuse uh, for your uh, for your tragedy out there. And uh, third, I'd like to go ahead and give an applause to uh, air support. All our phenomenal pilots. You've got to be a risk taker. You've got to be a, a just brilliant, innovative with balls. Thank Those you. pilots have balls. God bless America and God bless our pilots. Thank, Thank you, you pilots and military. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Wow. Thanks to all of you who came from Malibu, all around the district to talk about experiences. Um, you know, the county's up front on all of it, first responders and then next responders. We are going to establish uh, at least two recovery centers. One will be in Malibu. Many of you talked about trying to figure out how to get um, what you can get from FEMA, how you can file paperwork, how you will deal with permits, how you will deal with rebuilding. That's going to be part of what we will hopefully be able to give you the information in the recovery centers. We'll also want to explore in our water districts kind of what happened. Uh, I think it's important to understand when all that water is being pumped out, it, it's not clear how to make it come out of every single place at the same time. And we will want to definitely look into it. We share responsibility in the rebuilding with the city of Malibu because, as you know, <coughs> permits, I'm sure you all know very well, permits within the city limits are within the purview of the city. Permits outside the city limits in the unincorporated areas are ours. But I believe we're working very well and closely with the city and with all of the areas through the canyons and over to the other side. There will also be a recovery center in the towns of uh, Agoura Hills, Calabasas for that whole area. Bell Canyon's been burned out. Malibu Lakes has been burned out. Mm. We know. So it's... The, uh, the final thing is, in terms of notice, I think that we want to look into what our neighbors have done in Topanga. They've been burned out about 53 times already. And they have what is essentially a phone tree, we would call it in the old days, so that the minute one person knows, they let 10 people know who let 10 people know. They have their evacuations organized by sections. So the section one goes and takes the horses, and these sections go into the valley, and these sections go to PCH. They also have a very narrow escape route, just like you do on PCH. And we need to know who goes north and who goes south and instantly turn it into only going north and only going south, which was part of the problem. I believe you know since we started a PCH safety task force together, there are five different jurisdictions on PCH in terms of um, our you know, city of LA, county of LA, city of Santa Monica, city of Malibu, etc. And we're trying to coordinate and we must do better on that. So all I can say is the county succeeded wildly and failed and we will probably continue to do so but i hope it's much more on the area of succeed than fail as i said at the beginning about the shooting to say once again our hearts are with you it's really true i mean my colleagues have a number of people here who care about a lot of stuff who are still waiting because they knew it was important for you to be able to talk to us and I promise that we will be there and we will do everything we can to make this recovery work. Thank you very much. So we have a motion.
It's, it's okay. You don't ever have to applaud us. Um, we have this motion for the declaration of emergency. Move it, Madam Chair. Thank you.